morning everybody. Welcome to the Firefly Studio 67. Uh, welcome to all my new subscribers and a hello to all of you who have been with me for a while. I know it's been a few days since I posted. Um, I've just been busy, busy, busy guys. Um, I've got lots to share with you and then I've got a little project to share. Um, so let's just jump in first. I have <clears throat> been making covers. And let me just show you some stuff that I've been working on. These are going to all be fabric uh, one signature journals. And so I've got the covers completed. Love this. This is old um, bark cloth that I've recently acquired, and I love it. Um, it's the same for here. I've attached, um, now this one doesn't have the bark cloth, but isn't that beautiful how that's coming? So those are three covers that I managed to get completed. Let me sit those over. The other thing I've been working on <clears throat> are some of these. If you follow me on Instagram, you probably saw this. This is following um, Took, who's at the um, Took's craft table, her tutorial. And I will put her name in the dis description box below so you can check her out. Um, she has got a great little um, tutorial on how she made these, and these were all using various kits um, from designers that I work with. Let me show you. These are, um, all of these are Tracy's little cigarette cards, and then she does the tiny embellishment. And let me show you this one. This is her little tiny tag. Isn't that sweet? So I played around with that yesterday, and um, that was using this diamond glaze. Really happy with how that came out. They're very time-consuming. Um, I worked a long time to get those, but I wanted to show you these. These were using... Um, oh, I shouldn't put these together. They obviously hadn't completely dried. These are using my porch prints B. It's her little B booklet and I just took it and put two to the page, right? And look at that, aren't them sweet? So I managed to get, um, let's see, some of those done. And then Tracy's got that little deck of cards she does, so I put that, I believe, four to a sheet, a sheet to get that size and I'll be honest I think next time I'll do two because I, I'd want it I personally want it to be slightly larger um, Took did hers four to a sheet and uh, oh my goodness I couldn't work in that um, no sorry she did her six I think and it was too small for me to work with because um, you know I do I start to have a little bit of trouble with my hands um, so yeah check her out a um, couple of these still got a couple of little air bubbles, but you know, it's not perfect, but I love those. That was a lot of fun because I've been, uh, you know, sometimes it just all gets a bit stale. And um, <clears throat> so I have been playing with things that um, I just haven't had time to do. I mean, I can't tell you guys how many, um, you know, I always see all these great tutorials and I think, oh yeah, 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 but I just haven't had time with orders. But anyways, I am starting to make time. I think this virus has got me kind of refocused on, um, you know, doing some things that I enjoy. I mean, not to say I don't enjoy a journal making, I do, but um, I've got to start, um, being more creative again. So, okay, what's some other stuff I've been doing? Uh, following Pam's at the Paper Outpost, she did some little um, uh, little button charms, and uh, you guys know I'm not a jewelry maker. I'm terrible with this kind of thing, but I just played around and come up with a few little tiny beads. They're not really the way I want them to be, but it's just a thing I just needed to play with, so that was fun. Okay, so 
what are we doing today? I do have a project. These are what I've been playing with, and I have to tell you guys. So this is two more journal covers that I've made. This has been so fun. Um, we've all got the drawer where we put our scraps. You know, I just throw bits and pieces. This isn't all. Some of this is, you know, laces and things. Um, which I do need to organize, but I, I just, I'm tired of organizing and working. I wanted to play. So we've got this drawer of all these little scraps. So what I did is um, I gathered those up. Let me get my product here. And this is embroidery stabilizer. I have got in my favorite tools and supplies link in the description box, um, there's a link to this product. This stuff is fun um, because I don't like to waste and we always end up with little pieces of maybe seam binding, little pieces of lace that maybe they won't even work for um, snippets. Maybe they're just too small for even that. And that is where this product comes in amazing. So I thought today let's just take this step by step and let's just have some fun and hopefully you guys will be inspired to give this a try because it has been such a, a fun project to do. So start out with some lightweight muslin. Um, I personally, <coughs> excuse me, I really don't see why if you've got an old sheet that's got a pattern I don't see why you couldn't use that because to me the whole point of this is to cover up the plain space the muslin so I think even if you had a pattern it's just going to add to it even more but um, we're going to use the muslin because I've got that handy here okay so I made these as journal covers so I kind of measured these out um, with what I knew I was going to want to work with. But today I'm going to do this so that I can cut it out into shapes to embellish journal covers, um, maybe, um, let's see, journal covers, maybe some um, belly bands. I don't know. We're just going to do this, and this is just going to be a step by step. Um, on how to use this this product. So I've torn that and just so that you know and again if you're doing it for a journal cover then measure out your muslin. Now bearing in mind it did seem to shrink slightly because this is going to go under water. It's a water soluble product and um, so I would make it probably, um, I'd add probably a quarter of an inch. You could always come back and cut it off, but what you don't want is to end up with it too small. So just for argument's sake on this one, uh, this is an 8, and I'm just going to do it like an 8 by 8 square. Because as like I said, this I'm going, to, I'm intending to make some templates to cut out some little hearts with it. Um, I just thought that would be super fun. Okay. So you've got your muslin. Now this is the best part. You don't even have to. Um, okay, so this I just kind of took everything in my drawer, right? This one I tried to focus on greens. And I pulled in some little uh, bits of gold thread that I'd been gifted. And so that, you know, it kept with kind of the green theme, and I just pulled in a bit of the kind of burgundy pinks um, within that. So th so what I did last night is I acquired some of this vintage Ash uh, Laura Ashley fabric, and because I knew this one, I wanted to have it color coordinated, just because I haven't tried that yet. Um, so I thought, well, I'll just start cutting these up because they were really odd pieces that I picked up from the um, 
somebody had, you know, it was just scraps left over. And I just thought, oh, you know, I'm going to just take these and see what I can do. Now, I don't want it to be too uniform. That one's too big. I must not have cut that. Um, but what you're trying to do is to cover all of that white space. And like I said, I've not done one like this. So this is going to be an experiment, guys, because um, I've just been grabbing what's in my um, scrappy drawer. But this was... These are more, <clears throat> you know, the same patterns over and over. And I'm just kind of curious to see which I like better. Because, you know, I kind of like an eclectic mix. I don't like things to be too matchy. But if that's what you want, you know, obviously play around with it. But I just, I, it was so much fun to just finally start trying some new things again. Let me let zoom this back in so you guys can just kind of see. Now this, you can just pile it on there, um, but like I said, I'm going to try to have it a little bit. Um, I just want to kind of scatter these around and you want to cover all of that base muslin just trying to think if I've got any more blues. This was just the Laura Ashley stuff here, but I think I might go and dig through. So, so yeah, this video is going to be a little bit different from what I normally do because this is this is just the, the whole process. You guys are just going to be along as I do it. Yeah, see the other ones, <clears throat> some of the fabrics were upside down like that, for example. And so you kind of, I'm kind of learning <coughs> as I go um, little things that maybe I want to tweak myself. Now, again, play around with it. And if you like the look, then just go for it. Um, and then this one, I took thread and just started pulling it off the roll and oh my gosh the other great thing about this is when you go to the car boots here people have these honestly they're like 25 cents maybe or you might get 10 or 20 rolls of um, thread for like a pound and I'm very particular on my sewing. I only use the Guterman now. But these, at that price, I just thought, oh man, when the car boots open up, I'm going to be snagging up all the thread I can get because I just started pulling it off. And you lay that on the top, and then you're going to put the um, this over it all. And that's when you're going to start doing the free motion stitch. Now, you're going to see when I get in front of the sewing machine, I don't have a free motion um, arm for my machine. It's out of stock, like freaking permanently. <laughs> so, um, I don't know when I'll ever get my hands on one. I want one so bad for my machine. Um, so, that's what you, that would make it so much easier, I'm assuming. I have never used one, but I'm assuming it would be. But you know what? Just make do with what you got. That's what I've had to do, and it still, I think, has come out so cool. It has such a cool texture to it, because you still get little bits that are sticking up. And uh, I sewed this thing like crazy, you can see. And you still, you get a nice texture to it. Just kind of a funky little project. Um, let me see if I've got any other blues in my stash, guys. Yeah, I just come across that one. I don't know. Yeah, why not? It's not something I would use. That's pretty... Mm. That was some really bad fabric I purchased on um, 
a sight, I'm not going to say, but, oh, it was horrible. So I may as well use it up like this. So don't be too bothered about the shapes. Um, I mean, like I said, this is actually supposed to be a project for your scraps left from other projects, but um, I want it to be specific to the blue and see how that comes out. So actually this is going to be perfect for using this fabric up because it is terrible. Terrible quality. So you want to go all the way to the edges because you want to cover up all of this white. And um, like I said, try not to get it too uniform. I'm terrible about that. As much as I try to not be precise, it's just my tendency to, and I'm really, really working on trying to get away from that. And if you're like that, you know how difficult it is to kind of, um, you know, just let yourself go on creating and let whatever happens happen. All right. So let's just see. That's got most of it. I'll come back. Yeah, that's got most of it, I think. All right, let me see if I've got some shades of fiber that I can work into that. just found a little bit of this blue lace and I think it would be fun just to put a few pieces here and there. I guess it's almost like a snippet, but just a little bit different. I'm just going to take some laces just because I don't really have any blue fibers. It's not something that I, uh, I kind of have my color palette <clears throat> and I try to stick within that in my studio just because I know, you know, what I like working with and it's just money you don't want to spend on things that you're not going to <coughs> use. Um, let me see what else have we got here. Here's some more. Again, it's poor, poor quality. So I'm just going to put a few pieces of that here and there. I mean, it's got a very good layer already. It's probably, I probably don't need to do it, but I just want to get as many different designs as I can in there. Okay guys, I think that's enough because uh, that's, this is ending up, it's going to end up being a super long video. Alright, so I'm just going to guesstimate on that. It's a fairly inexpensive uh, product. So I'm just going to, I hope I guesstimated right. You want to cover that completely, okay? Lightly press that down and grab your pins. What you're going to do is, without moving any of the fabric, just around the edge, lightly pin those to the, the base fabric, okay? And you're going to repeat that and do it all the way around, and I'll be... Okay, guys, that's how it's going to look. So when you pick this up, pick it up by the bottom. Don't tip it over, otherwise you might risk all of the fabrics shifting. Now at this point, I'm going to get my um, little tripod and try to set this up so you can see how I'm stitching this. And, and then we'll carry on. Okay, guys. Um... Because of the position of this, I'm just going to do a very short uh, clip 
because the, the sound of the machine is going to get on your nerves and um, it'll just show you if you're new to this what I'm talking about <clears throat> again this is not a free motion foot so it would be much much easier if you've got that um, and if you do you if you've got a free motion foot you probably already know about this so um, okay, so what am I using? I'm using a uh, white or cream colored thread. Uh, I prefer the Guterman. Um, use whatever you're comfortable with. I'm using a straight stitch and I've got my length at four. So <clears throat> what I normally st <clears throat> start out doing is just going around the perimeter so that I can just hold all of this in place. So again, let me just <clears throat> get you started, and then I'll stop it, and then I'll show you what I mean by like the crazy stitch. I'm sorry for the noise, but here we go. Okay, guys, I have went around the perimeter. Sorry, I'm going to have to move this so that it's it's all been closed so nothing can come out. And at this point... You're just going to just start going very random uh, with your stitching and you want to just make it as tight as you can so that what you're doing is holding those small pieces in place so they aren't going to shift. Because after this step, we're going to take this and run it under water and that's when this embroidery uh, stabilizer is going to dissolve and you're going to be left with your fabric. So bearing that in mind, you want to make sure you've got as much stitching. And I'm going to tell you guys, I stitched those covers, I'd say a good 30 minutes. You are going to go through some thread. So, so keep that in mind. I'll just do this for a bit and then I'm going to shut it off and we'll go on to the next step. <laughs> Let me see if I can just show you. I'm so sorry, guys. I, my scissors are over here. Let me see if I can show you at this point what I'm talking about. I'm hoping this is going to show up. There we go. You can see now. See there. You don't want a. You don't want to go straight up and down. You just want to just move that. And you saw I'm taking two hands to do it. So now I'm going to try to give you guys a different angle because I'm too close to the wall there um, for you to really see how this is going to get going now, okay? Okay guys, so as you can see, you are basically, it's like you're quilting it, okay? So that's what you're going to do, and I will be back with the next step. Okay guys, now's the next step. I'm sorry if it sounds a little bit echoey. We're in my, um, my uh, bathroom, so this is where I tend to do <laughs> my... Um, Anything, you know, if that requires water, I just bring it up here. So I'll show you my beautiful flower pot with flowers. And those are real. Aren't they absolutely gorgeous? Love those. Had to have something to perk me up. So, okay, so here we are. This is how it looks now because I thought the lighting in here is going to definitely show. And that's the back. That's the muslin. So you can see that I've done a lot of stitching now. So that should uh, be enough to hold everything in place. So, without trying to make you all sick, the next point um, that we're going to do is just put this under the tap. I'm going to, uh, let me get that closed up because you're going to just run this now under 
kind of, um, you know, lukewarm water. I don't know if that matters or not. It's just what I, I did last time. And what that's going to do is just dissolve that embroidery so that all you're left with, yeah, you are going to want to have that just a little bit warm because that will help to dissolve that um, stabilizer. And as you can see, it's all, see, you can see there that little bit did not catch. But don't worry, guys, the first time I did it, um, there was quite a few places I thought, oh, okay, I, I, maybe I should be stitching a little bit more. But don't worry, because when this is dry, you can come back then and go back over it if you'd like. Oh, I am loving this. See, I think, I think that the color coordinated is nicer. Okay? So you're just going to give that a good squeeze. <clears throat> and just... Remember, it's fabric. It's going to take a lot. Now I'm going to empty that water and I'm going to put that back through again. Look at that. But I just want to rinse it again because I did find that the stabilizer does have a bit of a... Um, uh, it's a bit gooey, so you want to give that a really good rinse. Let me just do that again. Sorry. I just want you to be able to see and then what you're going to do is if you if the weather's nice where you are just put this out on a line and let it dry if it's cold you need to hang this over a radiator sorry I, I'm trying not to move the camera guys but I'm doing this one-handed <laughs> okay let me move this back over and try to Position this so y'all can see. You can look at my beautiful flower while I'm doing this. There we go. Look at that. That is absolutely gorgeous. Yes, I love the cord the the colors being coordinated more. Okay, so that's going to go out into the sun and dry. And the next thing we're going to do is 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 make ourselves a template and start cutting this into shapes. Okay guys, I'm back. We have had a chance for this to dry out on the clothesline. And um, while that was drying, I went ahead and did a couple of more. This is pinks and then this is one in peaches. Now, what you will find is after this is dried, you're probably going to see a few places like that. I will now want to go back and probably do a stitch over that. Stitch a few of these down. Um, just depends on the look that you're going for. But yeah, there's a few on here I can see. I'll probably go back over this area. But it'll, you know, you'll see it once this is dried, any changes that you need to make. So <clears throat> what I thought is um, what I decided to do, and this is just me learning you know, self-learning. If if you know a different way of doing that, then great. I just took some uh, file folder that I had left over, and I just cut out some shapes. Hearts are the only thing I've got that I think of my die cuts that I think would work. Um, so <clears throat> I'm thinking I'm just going to pin that. I'm going to just try, I folded this one in half because I'm thinking on a journal cover, if this was the journal cover, that's probably a pretty good size. <clears throat> and then I cut out some larger ones as well because I don't know. Um, but I think it's just, at the moment, it's just a bit of a learning process because as this goes on I may find oh I'm not mad on it I don't know but we're going to give it a shot I'm going to do it this way if you wanted to pin that and go around I'm just thinking with my scissors um, it's going to be easier if I just do that on the fold and I'm hoping by doing that on the fold that it's going to come out pretty equal I hope so like I said guys we'll see if you are uh, 
yeah, that's not going to work. I'm just going to try to hold this in place. If you're a, into sewing, you probably know a better way of doing this. See, these scissors, I can already see this is going to be hard to do with this type of scissor. So there again, guys, I may have to, to purchase something. Because I've got the big fabric scissors, but those definitely aren't going to work for this. Let's see if that looks okay. Alright, let's see. Oh, actually that's come out really, really sweet. Okay, so just so you guys can tell, look at how thin that's come out. Now, I'm in my mind, I'm thinking how beautiful for some journal covers to have several of these. And then the other thing I'm thinking is <clears throat> let's just get some buttons. and put a few buttons around. You could even, oh, isn't that cute? Love it, love it, love it. I really, really like these cut out as shapes. You could put this onto a journal card because what I like about this, guys, it's not gonna add any bulk. Uh, let me just see if I've got a, <coughs> hang on. I mean, this is an index card, for example. You could just glue that on there with your little buttons on it. And look at you still, how thin that's going to be. But it adds so much interest. Let you see up close. I love it. All right, so let's just go ahead. I feel more confident now. I'm just going to go ahead and, and cut out a couple of more of these. Now, I've not... <clears throat> this one's one size down. It's always a bit scary when you're trying things out uh, on camera. And I'm going to save those snippets because I'm sure <laughs> I'll find another use. <laughs> I mean, honestly, it just goes on and on and on. You can just keep on finding uses for everything. So yeah, that's the only thing I can see is that I might need to invest in some fabric, like some small fabric scissors maybe. Uh, if you know, please do let me know because these, these aren't great for it. But having said that, there's no way. I don't, I don't think I could use that. I'll try it on the next one. So yeah, I love that. So I'm, I'm already thinking, okay, I'll just do a little outline of the heart maybe a couple of times. And you could even come back with some black and really define that. How sweet are those? All right, let's try a big heart. Like I said, if you want, you can just go back. If you don't want to do this, just use it to make some. I'm going to try it with these now. Oof. Um, I just think they make super cool uh, covers. And it's such a great way to use up the scrap. Yeah, those aren't working much better, I'll be honest. Oh, I love these. Oh, aren't they sweet? Okay, guys. That is all I've got to share with you all guys today. Um, I really hope that that has inspired you to give this project a go because it has been so much fun. And I cannot wait. And once I get all this stitched down, 
the pink to come back. I think that's my favorite size of the heart. That was kind of like the medium. And then this was <clears throat> more of a primitive. Um, this was a Sizzix die, and I cut that out, so I might even play around with that because that's kind of cool. I think on a journal cover that's going to look nice too. But yeah, I'm loving that. I think those are going to be awesome for little um, embellishments, fabric embellishments. And it, it uses up our scraps. So I hope you guys have enjoyed that. And uh, I hope everybody's safe and that you're getting some time to do some creating. Um, so give this a try and I'll be back soon. Take care, guys. Bye.